April of 2020 was the last time I picked up a musical instrument. For as long as I can remember, I've always been a creative kid, or at least I've always wanted to be. My mom loves to tell stories about me as a toddler and how I would do jigsaw puzzles for hours. I've been passionate about art since the time I could finger paint. And at 10, I started playing the trumpet and ended up loving music. I found joy in problem solving and creating things. And as I got older, my creativity grew. And then I hit high school and everything started to feel a lot more real. My future matters and college matters. And I completely stopped doing art and I gave up music. I lost part of my identity because I gave up my creative outlets. I took the classes that I should take, not the ones I was passionate about. And my few hours after school were quickly filled with sports and clubs and activities. There just wasn't enough time in the day to pursue my creativity. But more importantly, I didn't make the time. And time is what holds a lot of people back from pursuing their hobbies. Life just gets too busy. People give up their passions for their careers. And oftentimes, adults don't have a creative outlet. One of the classes I ended up taking was a psychology class at the college. I took the class for the science part, but ironically, it led me back to creativity. Part of the class was a research project about any topic in psychology. I chose to research creativity, specifically the neuroscience behind it. And it was through this project that I began to understand just how important creativity really is for your brain. I discovered what happens in your brain when you're thinking creatively, and this helped me understand why it's so important to your life. Because through creativity, you can literally change your brain. Neurons, our brain cells, form thoughts by passing electrical impulses to the one next in line, creating a massive cascade, kind of like a wave. When you're placed in a specific environment, your neurons fire in a specific pattern. When you're placed in the same environment, your neurons fire in the same pattern. This repetition creates pathways of thinking. Creative thinking is totally different. It's dependent on neuroplasticity, which is your brain's ability to physically change the way it works. Your neurons fire in completely new patterns. Different pathways connect, and you're left with new thoughts, new ideas through these new neural networks. Your brain is flexible, but it's really hard to draw a connection between the mental process of creativity and the real life manifestation of creativity, how it's applied and why it matters. Music is one of these translations. And this connection first clicked for me when I was watching a live brass band. There was one trumpet player specifically who was really talented at improv. Improvisation in music is the epitome of creative thinking in action. It's a collection of split second decisions a player must make confidently, deciding on the spot which note to play for every single beat. Everything has to fit perfectly into the big picture. The player must create a cohesive masterpiece note by note. This is problem solving in action. And this is hard. If I picked up an instru instrument right now, I couldn't do this. Most people couldn't either. So why can musicians do this? Well, there are two main systems in your brain. The default mode network, which is involved in spontaneous thoughts like daydreaming, and the executive control network, which is used to consciously come up with thoughts and ideas. In most people, the default mode network switches off when they focus, and the executive control switches on. But in highly creative people, this doesn't happen. The default mode network, which generates ideas, never switches off. Instead, the two systems work together at the same time. This crazy phenomenon is seen in musicians improvising. It's also seen in poets and artists. One radical art movement during the 1940s was a type of abstract expression called action art. 
It's basically the equivalent of improv, but in painting form, where an artist spontaneously applies paint to a canvas in splashes and drips and smears. Yeah, it's like watching a toddler finger paint, but this type of expression perfectly encompasses creativity and creative thinking. Just like music, note by note, stroke by stroke, a masterpiece is created. Jackson Pollock, who you've probably heard of, was a standout artist of this movement. And his pieces reflect the energy of life through the creative process of making them. He not only embraced his spontaneous ideas, but he evaluated whether the stroke would fit into the big picture. Both of these examples boil down to two common themes, problem solving and decision making. To problem solve, you need a creative mind that uses both networks to come up with a solution. Decision making is all about having ideas and confidence. Having a creative mind to come up with ideas and having the neural connections to quickly evaluate these ideas. So maybe art or music doesn't resonate with you, but creativity does have real tangible effects. It can help every single person improve their life. Because every single one of you uses problem solving and decision making every day. Maybe you're a surgeon or an emergency responder who has to problem solve and make rapid choices in life or death situations. Maybe you're an engineer. Engineering is problem solving, creating, and fitting ideas into the big picture. Problem solving and decision making. Creative thinking is important for every life, every career. And the only way to improve your creative thinking is to do creative activities. But creative hobbies have become so secondary in so many people's lives. Adults and even kids don't believe that they're important, so they're not a priority. My purpose is to change your perspective, because I've come to realize that art and creativity are contributing to my life. So I encourage every single one of you to take the creative leap. Creativity does not have to be perfect. Every brain is capable of it, and it's something you must practice in order to apply. Tap into the creative activities you used to love, whether that's art or music or creative writing. All of these processes rework countless connections in your brain and improve your neuroplasticity. It can be small things. Design a prom dress, come up with a new lacrosse play, do a jigsaw puzzle or a crossword every morning. Even changing your habits improves the flexibility of your brain. Brush your teeth with your left hand or drive a different route to work every day. Take the activities where your brain's on autopilot and apply your thinking. Find a creative form of expression and be intentional about implementing it in your life. You need to make the time. Make the choice. Grow your creativity and improve your life. You have the power to change your brain.